Back to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. We're broadcasting from the Field and Stream Lounge at Shot Show in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we are talking to one of my favorite outdoors writers and guests, Andrew McKean, the hunting editor for Outdoor Life, about a really, really interesting topic that sure educated me. Andrew, great to have you on the air. Thank you, John. It's good to be here again. So, Andrew, in the latest edition of Outdoor Life magazine, you wrote about Hunting in the Wilderness of Wyoming. And there's, what, 3 million acres of wilderness in the Cowboy State? Yeah, there is an abundance of wilderness all around the Yellowstone Plateau, and then there's other wilderness scattered around. But, yeah, three-point change, just a little more than 3 million acres in all. And you kind of profile a hunter who, with a couple of his buddies, went hunting in the wilderness, unguided hunt. They were contacted by a warden, and they were given a citation because they were hunting without a guide. But unbeknownst to him, and unbeknownst to me, it's against the law to hunt without a guide if you're in federal wilderness in the state of Wyoming. This was a jaw-dropper to me. A lot of people don't know about this regulation, and it is, it's it's enshrined in Wyoming law. So this is not a regulatory thing that's easy, easy to change, and it's been in the law in Wyoming since there's been federally designated wilderness in in the state. Those of us who make a business of applying for big game tags around the West are pretty aware of it. Wyoming does a good job of detailing that in the hunting regulation. So if you're going to apply for a, a, a unit that's in the wilderness area, it's it's spelled out in the regulations. By the way, if you're a non-resident, you need to hire a guide. There is one additional detail there. You have to hire either a registered guide or you can go with a resident of the state of Wyoming. So that gives that that softens it a little bit, but it is a pretty interesting regulation. What's the name of the hunter that got the citation? And why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about the story that you wrote here in terms of how far he took it in terms of fighting this ticket? Sure. So when I was investigating or researching this story, I went back in the you know in the archives in the law to to figure out the origin of the law and then what has happened to it because a lot of my buddies and I have talked about this a lot. Like, really. There's no other Western state that has this prohibition. So we've just wondered, has it been contested in the past? So I I started digging a little bit, and sure enough, I found that in 1984, this Minnesota hunter named Kieran O'Brien and his buddies packed into a wilderness area with no guide and hunted elk and were contacted by a game warden, as you described, and were were cited. Well, Kieran O'Brien, who I talked to on the phone, I found him in Minnesota and called him up and asked him about this, and he is in his 80s now and is snuffy as ever. I can only imagine what he was like as a younger man. Still hopping mad about it. Still hopping mad about it. So he takes it all the way to the Wyoming Supreme Court. I mean, this is not a man who rolled over and and took this line down by any means. What happened when it got to the Wyoming Supreme Court? So the Wyoming Supreme Court decided, I think it was on a three to two vote, they upheld the the statute for Wyoming and, and Kieran got a ticket. And that has been the litmus test ever since. People have not pursued it to that level. Maybe nobody is as tenacious as Kieran O'Brien is about it. But it remains. It stands to this day. If you are a non-resident hunter, big game hunter, you must hire an outfitter or go with a resident. Interesting detail about this is I can go as an independent citizen and hike backpack into the Shoshone wilderness outside of Yellowstone Park in July and fish to my heart's delight for cutthroat trout. I don't need an outfitter to accompany me. I can camp with my kids in the wilderness of the Shoshone River. I don't need an outfitter to accompany me. But if I draw a big game tag and I intend to hunt a big game species, big uh, bighorn sheep or elk or mule deer in a wilderness area, well, by golly, I need to hire an outfitter. What's the stated reasoning from the Supreme Court and from the state of Wyoming as to why this rule is in effect? So there's two reasons. One, the Supreme Court of Wyoming ruled that this was a wildlife management issue, and it is enshrined in national law that states are given the authority to manage wildlife in their states. This is why we have state-based wildlife agencies that have the ultimate authority for managing wildlife in their states. But what's interesting about it is the Outfitters and Guides Association say, and they're not wrong about this, they say big game hunting is a very dangerous task. There's oh, hold on, hold on. This is like saying you can't pump gas in Oregon because it's very, very dangerous to pump your own gas and somebody has to do it for you. 
true, but I have never pumped gas in the presence of grizzlies. Well said. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so there are some legitimate public safety issues. You're existing far beyond the margins of civilization. There's a lot that can go wrong. We can talk about this in a little bit. I actually drew a bighorn sheep tag in the Wyoming wilderness and hunted and had to hire an outfitter. And I mean, we had a, a wall tent camp 20 miles from the road. So there's a lot that goes into that experience. And I think the Wyoming Guides and Outfitters Association basically says, look, we don't want to send somebody unprepared into the wilderness just because they drew this tag. Instead, let's ensure their safety by going with a registered guide. Well, you know, what I was about to say as a counterpoint is, well, geez, Montana and I don't, don't have these rules. But then I look back and realize that, what, five hunters were attacked by grizzly bears in the gravelly mountains of Montana, big game hunting last year. So maybe there is a point that I'm not looking at. There is a point, and Wyoming has a high density of grizzly bears. There's big, lonely landscapes where lots of things can happen. I think the, the problem I have with the regulation is all of those things can happen if I'm fishing in the summer or camping with my family. This is true. And you're not the only one who has a problem with this. Contacted Tim Brass with Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, and, and he also is concerned about this issue. Yeah, and Tim, who is a a marvelous and, and experienced backcountry hunter and angler, as his, you know, his title might suggest, had a really interesting perspective. And I think he voiced what a lot of us have suspected, and that is this creates a captive audience for a guide and an outfitter. So, in other words, if somebody draws a tag in that unit, they have to hire the services and pay for the services of a registered guide or outfitter. And so, you're right, I can hunt the same territory on the other side of the state line in Montana and do it all by myself and accept responsibility for whatever happens. My problem with Wyoming is it does feel a little paternalistic. Like they just don't trust me to have the same survival skills and backcountry skills that I bring just from right over the border. So it gets to be a question of whether it's a government overreach. Or if it's a government ensuring that there's a customer base. Very interesting discussion. Now, there's an abbreviated version of this article in this month's edition of Outdoor Life, but I understand that you have an expanded edition of the same article that's going to be online. Where can folks find that? It'll be as part of uh, OutdoorLife.com's Open Country series. So we talk a lot about public land issues. This is really perfect for that sort of content. One of the interesting additions in that expanded piece will be Kieran O'Brien's full quotes, and you can get a real flavor of, of his ire about this. But one of the things he said that I think is interesting, we cut it out of the print piece, it'll be in the digital piece, is what's to stop Minnesota from excluding Wyoming residents who want to come fish muskies in northern pike in that state because it might be too dangerous for those cowboys that's a great way to leave this if you want to find out more go to outdoorlife.com check out the open country piece that goes in depth about this and if you don't have a lot of time just pick up the current edition of outdoor life check out the abbreviated article there along with all sorts of other great articles in this edition andrew it is always a pleasure to talk to you and have you on northwestern outdoors radio thank you john it's a pleasure to be here